Hey guys, it's Francisco yet again, teaching you more about computers and technology. So today we have a pretty interesting subject, but before we head on over to the next slide, why don't you guys hit that little subscribe button and help us out get some more following so we can do bigger and better things and reach a wider audience because I'm sure someone somewhere will find this interesting and it will definitely help them. And just in case you're that guy and didn't read the description or title, today we're going to co cover audiovisual equipment. Wow, 8K already. Yes, there is already 8K, but it's not going to be mainstream for a while. We're still adopting 4K, but we're moving so fast in technology that we already have 8K lined up. So let's continue on with this course. All right, so let's talk about the video equipment. Uh, what we're going to cover in video equipment is smart TVs, standard TVs, monitors versus TVs. And I have a little bonus section for you guys because I kind of want to dive into detail because this is such a basic uh, subject. But there's some small little hidden features that you won't really see in a consumer uh, work uh, environment. But if you're in the workplace, you might find little specialty services or sp specialty um, features. There we go. The word came out. <laughs> On to the next slide. So let's talk about smart TVs. So basics, it has an operating system, kind of, sort of. It's more of an application that runs. Um, usually runs from some form of Android, which is Java based. So a lot of, if you like development, um, a lot of these Java uh, jobs will typically have you developing applications that run on virtually almost all kinds of hardware so it's definitely something that's embedded in smart TVs um, that is software so it since it does have software it does require some form of computing um, it does have a mobile processor so the processor that's in your phone or tablet you might also find on the smart TV. Typically, I find that smart TVs have lower end processors and some of them are not very good. So you might find them to be a little bit sluggish compared to phones or tablets. Um, they do have flash memory or some other small form factor storage. So I haven't personally seen one that has a hard drive, but I may be wrong. But most of it, it is flash storage. So let's carry on to the next slide. So let's talk about standard TVs. Standard TVs, um, those are plain TVs that just output a video signal. They have no operating system, only display video output, and may have some simple control board. So it has some very basic logic that will let you switch over from inputs and um, some menu options where you can resize your picture and uh, you know figure out what it wants to do with the video signal that it's getting. Uh, they're definitely a little bit smarter than TVs back in the olden days. You know those big CRT, um, those big cathode TVs that just like hurt your eyes and uh, burned people's eyes out. That's why I have glasses, by the way. Um, so yeah, there's not much. They're really dummy TVs, but they work and they aren't as slow as the smart TVs because they don't really have to process anything and it's just direct electric, uh, electrical signals without processing. So pretty interesting information there. Um, let's carry on to the next slide. So now I'm going to talk about the differences between monitors and TVs. Um, I'm going to this is mostly going to highlight what monitors do and what's the difference between monitors and TVs because they have the same out in input output nowadays. So you can actually plug in a HDMI cord on well, an HDMI cable to a monitor and it'll work. And you have an HDMI cable on your TV. So they are similar, but they do have their differences. Um, so for the monitor, you usually connect with a in the olden days, it would be VGA and DVI. Uh, these are getting phased out for DisplayPort and HDMI, um, but they only share HDMI with TVs. TVs just mostly use the HDMI just because it's a little bit more universal. Uh, this DisplayPort is a little bit more proprietary. Um, size monitors are supposed to be close to a person. So monitors are for the workplace. They're not for you know, sh you might see them on POS systems. Uh, that's point of sale systems that whenever you go to a store, they have a monitor. Um, you don't really see them for people that want to watch, you know, the football game or want to watch TV. It's just not used for uh, entertainment. 
I mean, they are used for watching movies, but more than more than likely, you're going to use them for work because they have a higher pixel density. Uh, so it makes it easier to read documents. Have you ever tried to read a Word document on your TV? It's very, very hard because they don't have the right DPI settings so you can differentiate and see that crisp letter. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next slide. And monitors are made for productivity. Uh, they may have better color accuracy for graphics work. So uh, one of the good... Uh, one of the nicer ones, um, this is uh, looks like a tablet, but uh, Microsoft has been putting out a lot of uh, products that you can write on. And this has a little dial, which looks like one of those Surface ta uh, Surface uh, desktops. I can't remember what it was called, but it's like, it's like an all-in-one computer where you have the processor and uh, storage on the actual monitor and it's really nice because this one has a graphics card and it has such good color accuracy and it comes with a pen so you could do a lot of graphic design work and wink wink I kind of want one um, so maybe a touch capacitive for artists as you can see there you can touch and they have like a little pen and they have like the super cool dial which a lot of developers haven't uh, adopted yet can be tilted in directions useful for different productivity purposes. So maybe you want to draw, maybe you want to view something, maybe you want to write. So you can definitely do all that with this device and it kind of swivels up and down. You should Google it, by the way, or actually better yet, go on YouTube and look it up. Next slide. So last but not least, we're going to talk about specialty monitors. So gaming. Computer gaming has been so popular lately that we have so much computer processing power for the graphics that monitors can't keep up with it. So some graphics cards are outputting over 60 frames per second. The problem with that is that most monitors cap out with a refresh rate of 60 hertz. Some below, some a little bit higher. But the problem is that you can't really enjoy your graphics card because you have a lot of things like screen tearing and whatnot. So whenever you buy a specialty gaming computer, or sorry monitor they're able to refresh at a higher clock rate so that's definitely something that's very unique to the gaming uh, computers so let me go ahead and highlight this this is what we're talking about and this is a gaming monitor they're really cool really nice and they're expensive so there's also studio monitors that have a higher color accuracy so if you work with Photoshop and you do marketing or some kind of uh, graphic design, you want to make sure that the colors that you present to your client are accurate. So whenever you go and print, they represent something that is very accurate to true to life of the color. So that's definitely a special application there. And it definitely is very specialized and applies only to a few people. And now we have industrial applications, which is something that I deal with on the daily basis. So usually these might have an integrated computer that allow people to, you know, control certain machines or maybe even interface with like security interfaces that are part of like a house or a building. So they're very, uh, they're very um, specialized. Uh, they do integrate into different applications for different uh, settings. Some might be a little bit rugged. Some might be very fancy looking and be very sensitive. It just depends on whether it's a uh, manufacturing plant or if it's stored in a building that needs security features that are pretty smart. So I want to explain this a little bit more, but unfortunately, this is not the course to explain this. Maybe on a later course we can explain it, but for now, we're just covering the bare basics. Okay, so let's review what we covered. We talked about smart TVs and how smart they are and how they have integrated OSs and hardware on their TV screens. So that gives you like a standard operating system. And we covered standard TVs and how they're dumb as a sack of rocks. And we're also, we also talked and touched upon monitors versus TVs and how they differ and how they have different applications and how monitors are more specialized in TVs. And that's everything that we covered. So if you enjoyed this content, make sure to visit us at VelaIT.net 
forward slash courses where you can learn a lot about what we have to offer and you can pick up some new skills and possibly get a job in IT if that's what you want. If you don't, then you might just level up your skills at your current job. And also don't forget to subscribe, follow us on Twitter, and this is my Twitter right here. I don't know why it stays on this slide. This is pretty cool though. So thank you guys for listening and have a good day.